Okay guys, this is a mission planner run through on the initial setup with the Quantum Nova or CX20, whichever you have, the same thing, as long as it's open source, you should be able to connect to mission planner. I have my Quantum Nova connected with the USB on the underside and into my COM port 5. It doesn't really matter what COM port you use, as long as it's plugged into a USB here on the screen, if I get that to focus. Um, if I drop down here, it'll say that my Audrey Omega is, version 2.56 is uh, is connected to COM point 5. If I just make sure that's selected on COM 5, my baud rate is 115-200. Uh, leave that there. And then go ahead and connect to Mission Planner. It's connecting. It's going to get the parameters from my quad. Okay, so now it is connected. It says disconnect up here at the top. It's connected. Go over here to initial setup, and we are going to go to the wizard. In the wizard, we are going to select a quadcopter configuration. Okay, this is the accelerometer calibration. You want your quad to start on a level surface. Uh, I may have to set the phone down at times to get this, uh, complete this, um, but we'll walk through this as best I can holding on to the phone. So we're going to go ahead and start the calibration, place the quad on a level surface. It is placed on a level surface. Press any key, literally any key. I'm just going to press the space bar here to continue. Space bar. Okay, place the quad on its left side. I'm going to place the quad on its left side just like this keeping it vertical um, and perpendicular to the level surface and I'm gonna press any key and now it wants me to put it on the right side so quad copper on the right side here perpendicular to the surface and I'm gonna press any key now quad copter nose down quad copter nose down again perpendicular to the surface and quadcopter nose up so I'm going to switch to nose up perpendicular to that level surface and any key and quadcopter upside down so upside down uh, parallel to the uh, level surface space bar and accelerometer calibration is complete go ahead and select next live compass calibration with the live compass calibration um, you want to point your compass north at a about a 60 degree level uh, angle down towards the ground. So when I say that, north for me is actually back towards me. So I'm going to point my compass like this down towards the ground as I calibrate it. This might be a little difficult to do trying to hold on to the camera, but we're going to give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select live calibration. It's going to say, please move in all axes in a circular motion. I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to point my quad down like this. And I'm going to try one-handed here to go in a circular motion. Then I'm going to turn it uh, 90 degrees. And I'm going to do the same thing in a circular motion. This is really difficult to do one-handed. Then again, 90 degrees in a circular motion maybe I can just scoot it along the table here and then again 90 degrees circular motion you can see that USB cable getting wrapped up in there it helps to have a long USB cable so you uh, can turn this around a couple times you can do it upside down let me grab onto this There we go, that little beep indicated that it is done. My offsets are there. Whatever it says, it's pretty accurate. Uh, apparently rotate um, from rotor porn. There's some uh, free free advertisement for rotate. Um, <laughs> it is site and company. Um, it, he's doing a video for compass, a more accurate compass calibration on site. Um, I look forward to seeing that here in the coming weeks. But anyways, uh, for all intents and purposes for running through Mission Planner, that is the Mission Planner calibration. So we'll click OK and we'll click Next. So um, right here, what version of Autopilot do you, uh, Autopilot do you use? Uh, just 
leave this blank. You don't have to do anything with this. Um, I don't. I'm not using any sensor um, here for battery monitor. Um, so I don't need. Uh, I've got in here 3,000 milliamp hour batteries, but again, that doesn't matter because I'm not running telemetry that is monitoring my battery. Uh, unless you are, you don't need to play with this. Go ahead and skip it. Next. Sonar. Uh, as is, this device does not come with sonar. Um, so you don't need to worry about this. My sonar model is none. Next. Radio endpoint calibration. This needs to uh, have your, your transmitter. This here connected. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Let that boot up. It's on and connected. We will click continue. This is our radio calibration. Now, if I move the sticks here on screen, um, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and calibrate the radio here. You're going to select the calibrate radio as I move these the control sticks and, and dials and whatnot on my transmitter. Uh, this will set the min and max values uh, for my transmitter. So you want to make sure you do this properly. Start with the stick in the all the way down position. Start with your uh, SWB and SWA at zero, 00 just like you would if you were arming your quad. Go ahead and select calibrate radio. Uh, it wants to make sure that it's connected and that there are no props on the quad that's safest when you're doing this in case the throttle would load up and you would get a uh, prop spin and slice your hand off or something stupid like that so uh, make sure your props are off go ahead and hit ok and then it says move them to their extreme position so the red bar hits the limits so I will start with my throttle my throttle there in the center you see it goes up and back down limits I'm going again all the way up and all the way down all the way to my corners and all of these and you see it correlates here as I move the throttle and the yaw stick it correlates here for my min and max once I've done that several times just around in a circle you can do it both ways if you want it really doesn't matter um, there's no specific way to do it just make sure you hit all the corners and throttle all the way up and all the way down I'm done with throttle. I'll do the same thing for the other stick. And if you're mode one, mode two, it doesn't matter. You need to do it for both sticks. But just make sure that you're hitting all four corners. Okay, when you release that stick, it'll return to center. Something else I do is I run through my SWA into position one and position two. And then back up to zero, zero. I switch SWB down to one. And then same thing, position one, position two, and then back up and off. Uh, if you want, you can run your aux uh, dials here. It really doesn't matter um, because they're not controlling anything as is uh, on the quad. So you're fine there. It says click here when done. So I'm going to click here. We have completed. It says make sure your sticks are centered and the throttle is all the way down. That's important. Make sure it's all the way down. Go ahead and select OK. It shows your max and min values for your different channels and hit OK. It's completed. So hit next. Here the flight mode selection just shows you what flight modes you have selected. The green mode is currently what the controller, the transmitter is set to. If I change this to um, position one here on SWA. Let me switch it back to position zero here for SWB. If I switch it here to position one, it should go to uh, loiter mode. And then if I switch it again, it'll go to return location. It's kind of hard to see because uh, it's it's highlighted in blue, but it's really green. Um, it's just showing what mode you have selected on the controller. Um, but the default modes, just so you know, is the mode, flight mode one is RTL or return to location, return to home, whatever you want to call it. Altitude hold is flight mode two. Flight mode three is stabilize. Flight mode four is also stabilize. Flight mode five is stabilized with simple mode selected. And what that means is it's the headless mode or non-direction mode. It means that uh, forward is forward regardless of which way your quad is facing. Um, and it, it's all relevant to where you took off from, uh, where you launched your quad. So, And then flight mode six is loiter. Um, 
I didn't change any of these, so I don't need to save any. Um, you can adjust these if you want, but uh, again, for the all intents and purposes of this video, we're not going to. So I'm going to go ahead and continue next. Um, everything should be green here. It's verified GPS, which I'm surprised it's done because I'm sitting here inside my house and it's still flashing the GPS uh, light here, but it says it's connected to GPS and that's fine. So the only thing it has not it says, can you arm the... Uh, the autopilot uh, please try arming with your transmitter so all I'm gonna do is with my transmitter I'm going to arm you'll see the light flash there it is it's armed that'll turn from red to green with the check mark next to it saying hey yeah it does arm everything on our checklist is green everything's good to go go ahead and select next these are your fail safe options um, Again, you can or cannot play with these. It's really up to you. I leave them alone. Um, I have pretty, I mean, you should be timing your flights anyways and know about how long your battery is, uh, should be lasting. Uh, listen for the uh, low battery warning from the quadcopter and the indication by the LEDs flashing. Um, but basically, um, I disable all these because I don't want my quadcopter doing something uh, unexpectedly. I don't want it to think that the battery's uh, running low and decide to return to location when I'm hovering underneath a tree and then it decides to shoot up 15 meters or 45 feet into the air when I'm only 20 feet in the air hovering under the the bow of a tree and I end up with a quadcopter stuck in a tree that would really ruin my day so uh, I have full control of my quadcopter when I fly it and you should learn to do so as well but uh, so I'm not going to play with any of these. Go ahead and click next. Geofence is another safety net thing that I don't play with. Um, you can enable it. Basically, it's an invisible fence. It says, okay, if you fly your quadcopter so many feet or meters or whatever uh, units you have the, the mission planner set to, if you fly it so far away... Um, it will do something. Uh, it'll return to, to location, so return to home, or it'll land. Uh, you can choose what, what you want it to do here with the different actions. Um, the issue is, again, is if you're somewhere that you don't want to be, uh, like under a tree and you fly, say you've got it set to 400 feet, and you fly 400 feet away and you're underneath the tree and it decides to take off vertically, um, and you hit the tree, uh, it's going to end a, a really good day of flight into a bad day. So, uh, again, I don't play with this. I leave it off. Uh, have control of your quadcopter uh, at all times. Uh, have it within line of sight. Uh, or if you're running telemetry in a uh, mission, uh, waypoint mission, you can do that as well. Uh, that doesn't require total control of your your device but know what you're doing if you're going to do that and for the intents of this video as being an intro to the wizard I don't think most of you would have to telemetry on your devices yet anyway so go ahead and select next it says don't forget things to check here is a list of great tutorial videos and first flight and first time setup and ESC calibrations and all this wealth of information that you can find that they've provided here um, so if you haven't done any of these haven't looked at any of these sit down and take the time to uh, to check them out because it's a wealth of information and it will save you from asking questions on the uh, the Facebook group. So we're going to go ahead and finish this. That is finished. Um, now for, I don't know why, just, there we go. Um, some of you were asking about config uh, tuning, changing your max angle. Uh, if you go to configuration tuning here, um, on your full parameter list, this is all the parameters that you can change on your quadcopter. And each one of these is basically a set of rules or uh, conditions for your quadcopter, a bunch of if statements. If this, then do this, whatnot. And the description over here tells you kind of what each of these do. Some of you were curious about changing the tilt of your uh, quadcopter. Angle max is the parameter that you want to change for that. Uh, let's see if I can get it to focus here. There we go. Uh, I currently have mine set to 3500. Uh, you can set it more than that if you wish. This is the max angle that when you're flying your quadcopter, it will tilt either left, right, back, or forward. It will tilt so many degrees. And 3500 is 35 degrees. Uh, that's good enough to fight any 
good breeze, uh, probably 20 miles an hour. I don't fly my quadcopter at 20 miles an hour wind because I don't want to lose my quadcopter. It was a gift from my wife and I love her and if I screw it up, she's probably going to wring my neck. So I don't deal, uh, don't fly in conditions like that. But 3500 gives a little bit more pep than it would out of the box. Um, I'd also recommend changing the uh, stock uh, props or blades to a uh, set of nice props like a DJI 9450s or 9443s. Um, I find the 9450s really give this uh, quadcopter some get up and go, especially with no weight. You can see I've got the stock uh, camera uh, uh, holder down there for the GoPro. I don't have an action cam. I strap an old cell phone to the front of that for my videos, uh, and it works wonders for me uh, for now until I decide to get a, a finally do enough research to, to pull the trigger and, and end up with uh, an action cam. But basically what you need to know is that uh, that better uh, better blades will also help with that but um that's a little little bonus tidbit to the video the angle max if you want to adjust that you can if you don't the thing after you adjust anything in the parameter list you need to select over here write params you need to write those parameters to the quad once you've written the parameters to the quad then you can select disconnect and You've disconnected from Mission Planner. The parameters have been written if you change the parameters. But most importantly of all, um, your initial setup with the wizard is complete. Okie dokie. If you have any other questions, please ask them on the board. But this is a full Mission Planner tutorial through the wizard. So I hope this satisfies a bunch of questions that are uh, occurring on the message boards right now. Thank you very much. Bye.